There we go. Welcome into <laughs> SWB on a Monday night. Poor yeah. usual. Yeah. Poor usual. Per usual. Uh, Lauren Leal, Jeff Michael here uh, at Christian's Tailgate. Yeah. Our local spot. We love it here in the Heights. But all the Christian's Tailgates are great. We've had yep. a show at, what, five of the locations over the past couple of years. Yeah, there's been a few. And uh, we are in Houston, Texas at Christian's Tailgate. Like Lauren said, uh, food, drinks. I mean, I'm stuffed right now, so I'm going to try to. Uh, I'm going to try, Red Bull <laughs> try to uh, manage this one hour of unscripted and uninterrupted sports from myself and Lauren Leal right here on Sports with Balls. Happy Monday, like you said. I uh, hope you had a great weekend. I I had a decent weekend. There was a lot of news that, went hap that happened this weekend, NFL news, MLB news, uh, NBA news. Just a lot of stuff going on. Uh, Messi got introduced this weekend. There's a lot. A lot that happened this weekend, and we'll try to get to it all. But uh, before we do that, Jason had his band perform this weekend. That's right. Uh, I wanted to go, Jason. I'm going to be out there one day. It's all right. I made it. I made it I there. I had a performance. But uh, Jeff. Yes, Jeff got to see it firsthand backstage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah backstage. I was. I was backstage. He was a, he was a groupie. I felt important. Uh, he I was did. very VIP. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, I got to listen to some country music, some 90s. There we go. Here's the picture. There right we here. go. We, we, we rocked Love out to it. some 90s. Yeah, we definitely rocked out to some 90s. It was a lot of fun. People were dancing. People were taking photos, everything. It was, it was fantastic, man. I got to say, the girl that you have singing for you is really good, man. Her name's Julia, and she's great. She can rock, dude. Per I, I was I was impressed, man. She's got perfect pitch. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things that I wish I did, because every time I would then, if you just, I, people who can sing like that, they're just so lucky. What, well, like, just like variations of levels in her voice? Oh, no, like she, basically, pitch. if there's something on key, she can sing it properly. Because uh, everybody can sing, but not everybody can sing on key. Dude, like, singing uh, is one of the talents well, that impresses me so much. I watch all those singing shows. I, I absolutely love people the that voice, can sing. The Voice, American yeah. Idol. Oh, yeah. Watch all so, uh, that, okay, so you say anybody can sing. I've been told that before. Ha, huh, yeah, right. I <laughs> Lauren can't. can't we're not pulling you on crap. stage. You're not pulling me on stage unless you want me to host <laughs> something. Then we're then you know I'll I get everybody. Come on on stage. Up. I mean, yeah. there might be some like talking points during a song. Yeah, oh, but uh, but uh, when you say when you say anybody can sing, you mean anyone can hold a note? Well, anybody can actually just belt it out. But everybody knows from a drunken karaoke night, some people <laughs> are good and some people. Hey, aren't. I'm here. I'm seeing no sound again. See if the sound is okay. Is it, uh, are we really doing that again? Uh, can, can, look, if you guys are out there, can you all hear us? Uh, Please let us know. Kyle says no sound. Uh, I'm just hearing. Uh, I'm not seeing anything on Facebook. So. Okay, Kevin said he hears the sound fine. So we'll continue. We will keep jamming. Kevin, take your phone or computer off of mute. And look, by the way, everybody that is out there uh, tuning in through YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, even LinkedIn, uh, Twitter. Thank Link? you guys. I didn't realize we're on LinkedIn. We are on LinkedIn. Okay. So uh, thank you guys for joining in the show. Leave your comments. We'll try to get to them as soon as possible because there was some fantastic, uh, I guess, news, if you want to say that. If you're in Houston, probably not. But some interesting stuff happened over the weekend and some really interesting stuff today in the NFL. Today was the franchise tag day, and we will get to the running backs that did not sign but there was other news that broke yesterday that I know Lauren wants to get into as well. Absolutely, absolutely. So I, I said it before the show, and of course we're in Houston, Texas. What comes to my mind? DeAndre Hopkins. He is now two years with the Tennessee Titans, and he'll be there in the fall. Um, after the Cardinals let him go a couple of weeks ago, he was practicing in their facilities. That didn't take place. Now he's going to be reunited with Tim Kelly and Mike Vrabel, mm. two of the guys that were under Bill O'Brien when they were with the Houston Texans, when, uh, of course, Hopkins was as well. So I see I see this in two ways, Jeff, where I'm thinking about the crowd perspective of it all and what is, is it, are Houston fans going to be like, yay, he's back, or boo, no, <laughs> he needs to be intercepted, he needs, you know, like he does not to make any catches. He needs to be blocked constantly or are they going to give him a, a warm welcome? That's from the fan perspective. And then I also have from the Titans, they just tremendously increased their offense. Tremendously. They have some good tight ends there. Um, but I know with Mike Tannehill – can use the help. Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill. Yeah, yeah. Ryan Mike, Tannehill. Mike Vrabel. Mike, Mike Vrabel. Vrabel yep. Ryan Tannehill. Um, but what are your overall thoughts on this, Jeff? Well, okay, so uh, 
he went where the money was. One of one of the yes. cons, yep. <laughs> like that is that's it. That is all this comes down to. DeAndre Hopkins is in the twilight of his career, even though he's probably still a decent inside the twenties and first down receiver. He's not that explosive anymore. He will draw some attention. One hundred percent for sure. But I mean, he's still going to stay wide. He's not going to go slot. No, no, no. And, and like I said, he'll draw some attention for sure. But this offense runs directly through Derrick Henry. Right. So like if, if, if Derrick Henry's healthy, you know, DeAndre Hopkins numbers are going to fall. But he, he just followed the numbers as far as money's concerned. I heard one of the contract offers that he got was only four million a year. Right. Mm-hmm. So I, I think this one's two years, 26 million, which is 13. He just went where the money was, because let's let's be honest. This isn't he didn't go there to win a championship. The, the Tennessee Titans have three number one picks as quarterbacks right now. And, and they're not even re- sure who's going to start so they've got uh malik willis who they drafted last year that did not turn out so well ryan Tannehill was actually number one pick as well and then they've got the kid from kentucky they just drafted will will levis so i don't know how this is all going to pan out for tennessee who's going to end up playing their quarterback but deandre hopkins signs with the tennessee titans the ex houston oilers and for me it just seems like tennessee is a place where wide receivers go to 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 die <laughs> like oh my you gosh. know you randy moss went there uh look who's over there now you've got man you've got a few wide receivers that went there and they just uh, you know, th- i mean ryan Tannehill, his own teammate t- said that he wasn't a top five quarterback yeah that's that's awful to hear so um that's that's very encouraging go. when you're coming into the organization but i do think overall it improves the offense regardless of yeah. his decline in production I think that he is better out there. Like you said, he's an end zone guy. He's always within the 10, 20, and he can yeah. make it happen. Inside, I, inside the 20, just, he, red he, zone guy, he, yeah. It, it, what surprised me, though, was whenever he did go to the Cardinals and he was dropping passes constantly. That's not something we saw in Houston. So hopefully <laughs> the new change in atmosphere will change from that. Uh, like you said, Ryan Tannehill. Um, I'm not sure that what the chemistry is going to be be- between them two, but um, it's starting. It's starting today, a two-year deal. Yeah, two-year deal, and uh, look, uh, teams are reporting to camps tomorrow. Tomorrow, and we heard over the weekend as well, speaking of reporting to camps, that the show that uh, everybody likes to watch on HBO Hard Knocks will be following the New York Jets, and we all know the drama over there in New York. Well, I say drama, but who the quarterback is now, Aaron freaking Rodgers, Mm -hmm. and... um, I didn't tune into a single episode of Hard Knocks last year. I'm not a big Hard Knocks guy. Was that Cowboys last year or was that the year before? No, Detroit was last year, Did right? Sh- it was the Lions. Um, are you going to watch this year? Because it is the Jets. Because, if I have because it, it is Aaron Rodgers. What's HBO? If it, is that on Hulu? Is it streaming? <laughs> is that on Hulu? <laughs> I don't know. Is That's HBO it. on Hulu? I don't if know. If so, I'll tune no, no, in. No, no, no. HBO has its own. Uh, I'll see what it's about. I don't know. I don't think it's I on Hulu. I just remember. Though. It's got Max. It's whatever Yeah, Max HBO Max. Is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. If they're on Hulu, yeah, I'll check it out. I just remember I did when the Cowboys were on it for a couple of episodes. Yeah. And I was like, man, this is boring. I'm just going to keep roughing it. And I couldn't take it anymore. Mike McCarthy, no personality. Yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't. Did you? See um, sp- are you going to watch the Jets, Aaron? Uh, I'm sure he's going to get his solo episode about how he well, relaxes and unwinds. Here- <laughs> Because it's I don't so think that he wants anybody to watch that. How how Aaron does all that, right? I don't know. Like we all know how a lot of people unwind and relax, and I'm not really sure if Aaron. Oh. If you want to see how I've Aaron saw that he's complained about it. Yeah, so it that's that's the decision. Like, uh, so he said that they were pressuring the Jets. Like last really, year was the Cardinals. Really last year was the Cardinals? Cardinals. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And before that, maybe Detroit was before that. Like I said, I didn't watch one. Um, and okay, so there you go. Kevin Anthony, thanks for that. It says, uh, Aaron was quoted saying they crammed hard knocks down our throats. So you already know that Aaron Rodgers isn't going to be up front in those cameras. Yeah, I mean, and I've like, I've watched all the shows that you do guys with Good Morning Football, Get Up, and all this stuff too. And I was listening to one of the former coaches' takes where he just said, No, we don't want them in our locker room. Are you kidding me? Like, that's our time to. You know, speak with them, rough them up, coach them. Like, it's just more of a distraction than anything. So, uh, we'll I, see. <laughs> look, we like it as the audience because it gives us some insight. But Zach Wilson, they don't. That Zach Wilson, who who started a few games for the Jets, as we know, and is, is pretty controversial for all the mom stuff, right? Or <laughs> Like, so, uh, I look, follow Zach Wilson. Like, I'm down to watch his progression. You know that is going to come up. And if it's yeah. not, it's going to be brought up, and the TV people, the editors, are going to exit out. 
but there's it's going to um, be brought up. There's some interesting characters over there in the Jets. They're a pretty young team with Brees Hall. Hopefully he comes back healthy. He had an injury last year, but he was pretty explosive. Uh, they've got an incredible group of guys over Look, there. Chewy says, I really want to see a playoff team be on Hard Knocks. They need to change the criteria. Well, Ooh, good question. they don't choose teams, I guess, that they don't think are going to make the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, because it's not like they're going to Kansas City. It's not like they've gone to the Pats in the past couple of years. Patriots um, would have been interesting too. Yeah. Uh, because look, and, and look, I'm it's glad you like bring I up said, the it's Patriots. A distraction. We were just talking about DeAndre Hopkins, and this is more like the Hopkins signing for Tennessee is more of a downfall or degrading thing to the New England Patriots because that is where everybody thought he was going. He had been there. I don't know why they let him walk out of the building without signing him. Like I said, money. Yeah, it wasn't enough for him, but the Patriots really needed him, and I felt like. If the Patriots didn't sign him, they were doing themselves a disjustice, which they did. And the Patriots had a good chance to actually improve their roster pretty dramatically, right? Ooh, so, does Mac Jones bounce back this season? Well, and so that exactly, I think Hopkins would have helped him yeah, a for sure. ton, right? He is a first down receiver now. He's a he's a go to first down receiver and and inside the twenty, inside the red zone guy. So I, I think he would have helped Mac Jones tremendously, and it sucks. That if you're a Pats fan, uh, that sucks that they did not sign Hopkins. And he goes to the Titans, mm -hmm. right? Like, the Titans? Just uh, the Pats didn't want to fork up the money. I, I felt like that was the place he should have ended up, but he didn't. And then here we go. Now uh, DeAndre Hopkins signs with the Tennessee Titans. So uh, the um, ex-Houston Oilers, the Houston Texans, will have to face him twice a year and see how that goes. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. Go go D-Hop for the money. And speaking <laughs> <laughs> for the money, uh, there's a lot of people that didn't get paid today. Ooh, man. Yes. Uh, earlier you mentioned something about tags or you mentioned people who didn't get signed. Yes. That's where I was going to go next as far as the running backs. Yep. And how, you know, running backs and in general in the NFL, you have the four years and then the rookie contract. Uh that's the rookie contract and then the fifth-year option, the franchise tag and whatnot. So if you are a running back, you're trying, obviously, you have a short shelf life. You're, yep. You're trying to get as many as, as much money as you can. Yes, your first or second and contract And it's weird, Ezekiel huge. wasn't even in this conversation either. No, he's, he's well, he's not near. So the, there were three guys that were out there that were absolutely looking to get paid, one being Tony Pollard, who was uh, Ezekiel's backup, mm -hmm. the other one being Saquon Barkley, who uh, fourth most touches uh, by a running back in the league last year, led the league in rushing last year. Uh, I'm sorry, Josh Jacobs, who the next guy is, got the number one and was a uh, leading rusher. So, but Saquon Barkley and Josh Jacobs and Tony Pollard all were looking to get uh, deals done, mm -hmm. long-term deals, mm -hmm. four-plus years. None of them got it done. Yeah. All right? The only one that signed the franchise tag and will report to camp is Tony Pollard. The other two... We, Saquon Barkley and Josh Jacobs, we don't know. I, and, they and, may hold out. And, and the guys that do report to camp, like you said, Tony Pollard, like he will not get fined until uh, – unless he decides to set out of a game, that's whenever he would get fined. But as far as the other guys mentioned, who is, is the surprise to you? I see Josh Jacobs. <sighs> well, he helped the Raiders this, last year. This is so interesting, right? Because as the running backs, everybody knows this. You just said it. Short – Shelf life. You need to get one really good contract if you're a running back. Uh, Derrick Henry came out just a little bit ago after nobody was signed. Saquon Barkley writing stuff on Twitter, but Derrick Henry came out. We're speaking of the Tennessee Titans and said, at this point, just take the running position out of the game. Then uh, the ones that want to be great and work as hard as they can and give all to their organization just seems like it doesn't even matter. I'm with every running back that's fighting to get what they deserve. And, of course, he's talking about money. And neither one of these guys, speaking of, uh, uh, Josh Jacobs or Saquon Barkley, neither one of them got the money that they wanted, right? Saquon Barkley was actually in the facility, in the office, with a pen, trying to sign a piece of paper, and they could not get a deal done. And for both these quarterbacks, you got Jimmy Garoppolo in Vegas now, and you got Daniel Jones. They both are absolutely horrendous without good running backs. Like, terrible. So, so Titans, woo. like I said, you just increased your O-line. Or not O-line, rather, just your offense in general. Because, hello, you already got the running back Derrick Henry there. Now you got D-Hop with the hands. I can't remember the Titans' name for the life of me. But you got a great tight end there as well. 
I mean, I just think the Titans, that just goes back to D-Hop going to the Titans. But in general, as far as the running backs go, that sucks for these guys. Are they going to end up back at their facilities? I, I don't know. So I know that Saquon will – okay, so if, he's, if he misses any game, it's $500,000 per game. They, these guys are wow. too talented not to get picked up, even if there's an injury on the team well, during the season. Another team, another it's not, organization. They can't get picked up because they are still under contract, right? But they didn't sign the franchise tag. which So they have to sign a franchise tag with these teams this year, or they yeah. cannot play. And it's just a matter of will they play under under that that contract. It's it's. I, I don't know why a deal didn't get done. I don't know how, but they can't miss out. They're under contract. They will start losing, both of them, I think at least a half a million dollars per game if they miss games. And we but, all we know that neither one of them are showing up for camp here this week. So, but say during the season something happens and they want to trade. Well, I mean, I, I'm assuming that they can get a trade. They'd have to sign it. Um, we'd have, and so that's what but, I'm assuming. That's what that's what I'm seeing. If another team, another organization that wants to pay more than what the current contract is for for these running backs, and they want to get trade, hey, you know, Patriots. Oh, we we need we need another guy on the ground. Let me call Saquon. Let me call not Tony. Let me call Josh Jacobs. Even though he's on his current contract. A trade could happen. Yeah, I mean, there's there's loopholes in everything. I'm I'm sure. But look, Dalvin Cook is still out there. Yeah. Ezekiel Elliott still yeah. out there? I, I'm not exactly sure what direction these guys are going. I know they want to get paid. I get it. But the running back position is so uh, – it's just not money relative, right? Like, it's not the quarterback. And I, I think – like, I understand where they're coming from. But this isn't the NBA. They don't just hand out hundreds of millions of dollars to guys that don't matter, right? And these two guys, don't get me wrong, these two guys matter a ton. They were the top producers on both their teams respectively. But I, the, I, I, are they worth twenty million dollars a year? No, I, I, I don't. I don't know. Are they worth quarterback money? I, I don't think Not so. Not when they're injury prone, <laughs> but so is so is Mike Trout in the baseball world. And you know, Saquon had a knee injury two um, years ago, and he played great last year. I, I don't know, but he could get injured again. Yeah, he could. Uh, I you know that's why these running backs look. You look for a four year deal, make it. And, you bring up the NBA, and I actually just saw a meme like NBA memes, and it was like, I think Shaq and Kobe sitting next to each other on a bench, and they were laughing at each other and like, oh, like it, the the NFL has changed so much, like dummies or something like that. And so I guess it's, it's referring to these contracts. But in the NBA, like you said, you can sit on a bench and still get paid. Oh, millions. my God, 20-something million dollars to sit on the bench. I think that uh, what John Wall said on the Rockets bench, he got paid $42 million. Mm. <laughs> like, I know, I know. <laughs> like, uh, John Wall's the right. first person I think of. <laughs> uh, it's just, you know, I, I'm, these guys are definitely worth money. I don't know exactly how much they were wanting, but I, I got to think it's it's 12. Uh, well, I heard that Saquon was offered 13 to 14 and wanted more. I don't know where the number is. I don't know how much more you're wanting from, from these guys, uh, but I would assume 15, 16 million a year is, is where you're at, but it's – it's going to be interesting for both the Vegas Raiders and the New York Giants. The New York Giants with Daniel Jones, Danny Dimes. Uh -huh. He's with games without Saquon Barkley, 17 interceptions, 16 touchdowns. And he's like, uh, I think the win percentage is like 35. With Saquon, he's unbelievable. And then you throw in the Vegas Raiders. Jimmy G starting his first year there. You're not going to have the leading rusher in the NFL behind you. Oof. And and the guy that touched the ball more times than anybody in the NFL last year, I I don't know like I, I don't know what side of the fence I'm on who I'm who I'm here to actually I like root about Jimmy for. G. Yeah, he's with the Raiders now, I right? Because cars that. down cars down in New Orleans. Yeah. So you <laughs> Jimmy G's gonna need Josh Jacobs 100, percent and uh, I I don't know what these guys are gonna do, how it's gonna end up. Um, they cannot sign a long-term deal now. So once this deadline ended today at 4 p.m. Eastern, it's over. The only thing these two guys can do now is sign their franchise tag and play this year under their current money. And then they're free agents. It makes them free agents after this year. Tony Pollard will be a free agent after this year. But they're going to have to sign and play under their current contract this year, or they're going to lose $500,000 a game. Who? Okay. Woo! Ah. I know. I don't, <laughs> that's pretty crazy. If you're a Giant fan or a Raider fan right now, you are flipping out. Like, your season 
is over if bo- if either one of those guys is not playing. Now, we already know that Saquon said he's not going to be at training camp and may show up a week before the season starts, and that's his that's his call. I don't know what they're going to do about that. Josh Jacobs is another one. Like, the only thing they can do is sign their franchise tag and play under it, and then they're free agents. So, But you don't ever want a guy to come in to training camp the last week and just be unhappy with his team. Like that, ah, that's a miserable way to uh, start your season. But Giant fan and Raider fan, uh, good luck. I don't know. This is a sticky, sticky situation. I just never like guys in general coming in late in training. Yeah, I agree. In general, they they should be with the team the whole time. I agree, one hundred percent. We're gonna find out what happens. That all took place today, and like I said, you and, know, uh, I just got a notification on another note Uh-oh. as far as. The White House goes, not getting political, guys, but the uh, the Houston Astros (laughs) and the Las Vegas Aces are going to celebrate their titles at the White House in August. It's funny you mention that because there was a post the other day saying, did the Astros go to the White House and nobody saw it? And I was like, that's a good question. Like, I didn't know. Because normally, yeah, if they every win. team that wins a championship, <laughs> yeah. they go to the White House and all of that. So I of guess course. Uh, we'll be seeing them and the Stanley Cup winners, the Las Vegas. No, that's not the Stanley Cup winners. Um, WNBA? WNBA. Yeah. The all Las right. Vegas. Yeah. I was like, that's the Knights. Nice. What am I talking about? Welcome in, y'all, those of y'all that are just joining us. This is Sports with Balls. I'm Jeff Michael. She is the lovely Lauren Leal. Like uh, man, we, we're just getting started here on a busy, busy weekend. It is Monday now. We are uh, hopefully catching you guys up on all the. Uh, uh, news. Here's some interesting news uh, about ex NFL player Philip Rivers. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's now beat out Nick Cannon. Oh my God. He is expecting his tenth kid now with his wife. Oh this my is gosh, not. Gosh, I can only imagine. <laughs> this is not oh from multiple gosh. partners. This is his one and only wife. Well, that's great. Philip Rivers and her are expecting child number. 10 if he's the quarterback he has an entire football team (laughs) well that's what he's going to raise him to be right wow i don't know how many boys and girls there are in this or what's going on i have two kids right and i know they say one is one and two is ten there's no way ten ten he's still got four to go to match cromarty Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Cromartie. That's right. But how many women is that with? Like five, six? Like and how many is Nick Cannon 14 with? 14 kids. I think it's with like 10 women. Yeah. Guys, yeah. Antonio Cromartie. Yeah. He still has a record. But in the, in the Nick Cannon, I think. Yeah. That's why I said there's a different? meme out there of like this this big gorilla chasing this like dog around a oh corner. Oh, my gosh. And it's like it's and it's like uh, it's like Philip Rivers and, and, and Nick Cannon's like the little dog. <laughs> it's like it's pretty funny. But, uh, yeah, so Phillip Rivers will get his uh, 10th kid coming up here pretty soon. Um, congrat- congratulations. I guess, man. What? I mean, I if feel money, sorry for you're, her. You're Mormon? I or feel whatever. sorry for her. Is it, Mor- is it Mormons that have all the kids? Yeah. Is I it? Don't know. Is that what it is? Okay. I, don't all right, know. I was hoping I, I wasn't wrong. He's one hair. away from a. Uh, <laughs> offensive line. Yeah, that's what, that's what I said. If he was quarterback, that's 11 guys, right? Like, so there you go. He's got a baseball team. Like, you know, a co-ed baseball <laughs> team. He does not have a football team yet, but there you go. It's like, so he's... Soccer? He's, uh, how many people in the soccer field? 11. So okay, he would, he okay, would have so to play. away from 11, too. He would have to play. Oh. Come on, Philip, you could do it. Oh do another one. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, imagine if he was still playing right now. Um. Uh. Man. Wow. How do you play with what eight? I'm sure back. So you got it's at least two years. One oh, year per they kid. definitely had a night nurse. They definitely had a nanny. How many days is she not pregnant? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if there's ten yeah, kids, she's a sports with balls. Like, how many days is that woman not pregnant? And she's probably pregnant Be- more days than not. Yeah, I bet you she doesn't drink at all. <laughs> That's wild. Oh yeah, no caffeine. Man. Wow. Um, all right. Well, speaking of football teams and, and baseball teams and soccer teams, uh we yeah, welcome into sports with balls. Um, um Go ahead. No, I was just gonna bring up Steph Curry and yes, he this did weekend. over the weekend. Yeah. I'm seeing golf right in front of me. Did you watch it? Did you see the highlight of his I hole in one? I saw the highlight this wow. morning. I saw the highlight. Yeah, um, impressive. Yeah. Uh, look, I I play golf and Man, that he is. Shoots, he I think I think all the haters. He, he got a hole in one. A right? hole in one. Yeah, yeah during, he ended up winning the whole. He actually ended up winning the tournament, right? And because he, he eagled the last hole, hole eighteen, uh, the last day. And, and look, I think the people that are hating on Steph for this are because they're just flat out jealous. Like, 
The guy can play golf too. Like yeah. that's unbelievable. You're like, oh, come and, on, man. And he can play golf. What <laughs> yeah, else? What's, what's next? Yeah. yeah. And he's winning money. And uh, you know, the question came up: Should he play professionally? Like, stop. Like, just stop that. He's not a professional, like, uh, you know, golfer. Those those guys are unbelievable. Which, uh, look, Rory McIlroy won. I the, was just about to bring him up too. Yeah. He won the Scottish Open. I um, won. I won eight hundred dollars on that. Wow! Yeah, I put I put a hundred bucks on Rory when it was eight to one, eight hundred to one, uh, and okay. so I won. All right, pay out. Won no, me a hundred dollar or one eight hundred. Yeah. Look so there you go. You. That was a that was a good one. Awesome. And speaking of money, today, July seventeenth, it is National Lottery Day. Oh my gosh, it's the seventeenth. Yes, is it is. Nuts. This year has just flown by. The month of July is just crazy. Did All you right. buy your lottery tickets tonight's tonight's jackpot is nine hundred million. Dollars. Oh my God! If Saquon I got and mine. Josh Jacobs win the lottery, are they reporting to camp? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I don't think so. And that just reminds me of obviously not nine hundred million, but that just reminds me of nil deals. Like, okay, these guys making so much in college sports, why the heck should they go pro? There's a thing out there right now that that's going to uh, Congress right now. The nil, they're going to try to uh, they're going to pi- try to put a. Uh, some, somewhat, somewhat of a handcuff of a on that, yeah. So yeah. Uh, we'll see how that all pans out. Of course, if you pay attention to Sports with Balls, we will keep you updated. It's also uh, World Emoji Day. So, uh, Lauren, what is your number one emoji scent? Ooh. Ooh, that's a good question. I always said, like, my emoji is, like, the girl with her hands, like, on her shoulder, like, hey. <laughs> but the one that scent the most Probably the blushing symbol because not like with the hearts, but just like the one that's like smiling. Oh, with the red, the red cheeks. J- I saw Jason, just like, hey. Jason, you got your number one emoji you send. Mine's probably like the groan, like the ha. Ah, kind of uh, thing, where it's right. like something's always it? something's always happening, and so it's like ah. Oh, the one the, that's like the groan. The, the groan. It's just the face where it's just like ah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I've got mine pulled up, right? So it's from what left to yours, right, the top Jeff? row. My number one is laughing, like the, the, the laughing emoji. Number two is a money bag. <laughs> number three is the red sign with the uh, cuss word across the front. The red angry face with the, that has a Man, supposedly y'all. upside down smiley face. And then the, um, the poop emoji. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Those are my top five All emojis right. that I sent out. Uh, but you're describing your personalities. You realize that, right? I no, just, no, I just, I just, look, I just looked work. at mine as well. Oh, uh, what's yours? The second, so I have like the 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 laughing one, the thumbs up, uh, the groan, and then also the face with like the nerd with the glasses. and yep. then, like the thing. Yep. Because my girlfriend has glasses, and sometimes she'll send that to me, and I'll send it back to her. There you go. All right, uh, Lauren, you want to do your top five? Wow. Uh oh. The one I thought. <laughs> <laughs> would be my top is in the top, but it's not the top five. What is, what is it? Well, just today it's a red heart, which I don't o- often send those. But hold on, can we just <laughs> do a disclaimer? Yeah, sure. Jeff sends emojis like crazy. <laughs> I, I do use a lot of he emojis. He sends like th- at least three to five in yeah. one message. I'm like, ta, 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 ta. <laughs> I tap If Jeff wins the lottery, it's going to be a waving. <laughs> <guy>. Yeah. <laughs> there like, we go. See you guys later. See ya. Yeah. Bye. I'm out. <laughs> Would you, okay, would you, if you won the lottery, would you make it public? Nope. It you would, would be not made know. public. It would be made public I'm because the news <laughs> stations would come to you. No, no, no. You can hide your identity. They, they, they make sure of that. Like when you actually turn in your ticket or whatever, they can, they will hide your identity. No, 100%. I wouldn't let people know. I would know definitely them. not let anybody know. Yeah. Oh, everybody, but everybody everybody's would knowing. know when I have that nice house. <laughs> everybody's knowing if yeah. I do. <laughs> A year later, when you have that house built and the pool in the back. Yep. And then they're like, what the in Italy? Somebody in Houston, Texas won the lottery, and then yeah. people start doing their yeah. homework, and they're like, whoa, mm. okay. All, All right. right. Like, no, no, I'm a drug dealer. <laughs> no. uh, <laughs> the last one I'll do on National Day, it's Tattoo Day. National Tattoo Day. Lauren, I can't I, believe I just learned that you have one. I have one. I do. How did I not know this before? I guess I've never worn, like, short sleeves. We've never been to the beach together, so... <laughs> it's just up. Uh, it's up on my arm. You go to the beach all the time. So that is I say so that. specific. We've never been to the beach. Not like I never wear short sleeves. I've been to the pool. We never been to the beach. Yeah. Um. Jason, tattoos. No, because every time in a mine band be, with no tattoos, mine would definitely Ooh. be a sports-related one. But every time I want to get the logo, my team ends up breaking my heart, and I'm like, nope. Lauren, if you were to get it's a tattoo, if you were to get not a tattoo, what would you get? A cross. A cross. All right. A cross. Where? 
Um, I've thought about this before a lot. On your eye right there? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> who's, that, who's that rapper? Cole something? J. Cole? I don't know. No. Uh, he has tattoos all over his face. He's a really good artist. There's a country guy that does that, too. Jelly Roll. Post Malone. That's Post who Malone. I'm thinking about. Him and Jelly Roll. Both they get like same thing. Oh, Jelly Roll. I'm not a fan of uh, his music, but... Good for him and Golly, his story. All right. Well, Jelly Roll, if you're paying attention. No, good bad. for him and his story. I would love to <laughs> yeah. interview you, Jelly Roll. Come on over. No, on my ankle, but I used to uh, want it on my wrist, too. But there you no, go. No, all right. Well, I've already got mine, so I'm good for, uh, for right the here. next uh, few years. <laughs> um, few years? If you've got your tattoos, sit on a sports with balls, especially if they're sports related. Would you ever get a sports tattoo? Like mm-hmm. the Astros, the Rockets, uh, Texans? Like the Texans could pull off a miracle in the next five years? No. No? Jason, you would. You, you just said sports related. So something to soccer, yeah, right? Yeah, it would be my team's logo. Your team's logo. There or the England national. Send us three your lines. sports tattoo. Jeff would be getting the Cowboys tattoo. Star. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Dude, I'm sure. <laughs> if Kevin Anthony is still paying attention, I can't wait. Have you Does ever he have to- one? Uh, you know, Kevin. That's a bet. That's a that's a bet that we should do. That if the Texans win the Super Bowl, he needs to get a Texans tattoo. If the if the Cowboys <laughs> do, maybe I'll get a Cowboys tattoo. Yeah, you gotta look right. at all those. It's just a star, right? I can always cover that it's up. A star. It's a star. Have you seen those galleries of everybody who did the um, the sporting event winners? But of course, it never happened. So people jump the gun and they get the. Champions yes. this year. Yeah. Buffalo Bills champions, 1993. Uh, Bunch of bad jump ones. in the gun. Y'all, I went to Float the River oh, a month ago or so, and I saw there was a Houston Texan logo on this guy's calf. And I was like, oh, Houston. He's like, yeah, I live in Beaumont. Woo, what up? Beaumont. And I was like, okay. All right. Serious Houston Texan fan. All There's right. guys that have, I, I've seen some tattoos where they have the Astros, Texans, and Rockets, and, and Rockets all, in, all, all in one. one all yeah. in one tattoo. Yeah. Um, I, I've, I've I've seen hats that have the Cowboys and Astros, and that drives me absolutely bananas, bro. Like it drives me nuts. I'm like, you cannot be a Dallas Cowboy fan and a Houston Astro fan. That what what? Like you have to stay in your lane. Mm-hmm. Like I know people that are like San Antonio Spurs, uh, uh, Houston Astros, and Dallas Cowboys. It's like drives me absolutely. It's just nuts. representing Texas. Ah, uh, whatever. Well, Kevin Anthony said deal. I'll take that bet, <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <gasps> oh, uh, my gosh. We'll see. We'll have to come up. We'll, look, Kevin, we'll come up with something. Uh, we'll come up with something. You guys uh, that are watching on all the platforms, thank you guys for joining in to Sports with Balls. I'm Jeff Michael. She's Lauren Leal. We'll put up our social media handles down here on the bottom in a minute. Uh, Jason Vu, our producer, welcome mm-hmm. him in as well. You guys leave us some comments. Uh, follow us on Sports with Balls on any platform. We're on every single one of them. And obviously, if you missed the first half of this show, it will be up on podcast version all over your podcast arenas, wherever you get it, Spotify, uh, iTunes, wherever. We're on all of them. Just type in Sports with Balls or talk to Alexa. I do it all the time. I do, too. So uh, just say uh, Sports with Balls podcast to Alexa, and there you go. And we're coming to you live from Christian's Tailgate, one of five locations here in Houston, Texas. Get your food. Get your Uber Eats. Get up here. Get some drinks. Whatever you want. These places, This place is amazing. Their food's fantastic. There's probably 50 TVs in this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that Jake Paul fight this weekend? Is that this weekend? I know they have a big event uh, at all their locations for that. I don't know. Uh, I didn't even realize Jake Paul was still fighting. I just thought he owned Prime and was doing other stuff. Man. Have you heard of Prime? Yeah. I have an eight-year-old. Yeah. (laughs) I hung out with my nephews in Florida. He saves the bottles. I never heard of it until my sister told me because she works for Gatorade, and now they're like, Becoming their competitor. Oh, they're their competitor for sure. But they're about to get like sued I made or something. A mistake. So. I didn't know one's an energy drink and one's yeah, hydration. a um, hydration, like, like sports drink. Sports drink, and because yep. I saw my nephews, they wanted it, so I went to the store and I picked a couple cans up. And then my brother's like, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, the energy one. Yeah, apparently it's like the equivalent of like how many cups of coke or cans of coke. Is- uh, well, the thing is, so here's the thing yeah, with there's prime. There's caffeine in it. The, it's just it's yeah. Not- well, it's not that. It's not a lie. The thing is. They're healthier than all those other. I've I've done my research on these drinks because my kids love them. And Hydration one is, but <coughs> the energy drink. Though. Yeah, the energy drink obviously has stuff that your kids probably shouldn't drink. But I'm saying like, it's look. There's zero sugars, 
zero calories. Like it's all natural stuff. Like they actually, if what the, uh, is on so, that bottle is true, it is. It's actually yeah, a very, very good product. They're about to. Yeah, I, I, I had some inside scoop just Ooh. obviously because I still do. My sister works in there, um, not for Prime, but the competitor, and they're about to get recalled on some stuff. So. Pro- well, I mean, I wouldn't doubt it because whenever you have a company or any giants like Red Bull, like Gatorade, like any sports drink, they're going to come after you. 100%. So, but if, if whatever's on that bottle is, is actually real and true, prime drinks are better for you than any of those. Like 100%. Gatorade. Way better. Gatorade. Gatorade has, the best. has, no, it's got syrup in it, the high fructose corn syrup. And it this does? has zero. Yes. A lot of it. Oh. And prime has zero. You're Look, teaching me. Yeah, he's Cole's like, prime. Like, <laughs> he saves the bottles, y'all. Like at my house on his desk, he's got like, like it's wine. Bottle. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. It's his version. That's exactly right. He's got a <laughs> prime ball saved up, He's man. a primo instead of a wino. Uh, Kevin Anthony, fun fact. I was born in San Antonio. He loves the Cowboys and loves the Astros. Are ah, you, <laughs> you called him out. You wow. legit called Kevin Anthony out. Oh, man. Speaking of the Houston Astros, let's move over to some ML. B news. Now that football's rearing up, the All Star Game is over for baseball, and we are heading towards August first, <coughs> which is the trade deadline. Mm-hmm. And there's four or five teams that are really, really going after some players that that we've heard so far: Texas Rangers, Los Angeles Dodgers, New York Yankees, and the Houston Astros. Now. The Astros need to make some improvements for sure because of all of the injuries we've had. So. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah, pitching-wise, there's one guy that I want so bad here in Houston. And, uh, you know, if you follow the show and know me at all on social media, I am a Spill. Astros fan. Uh, Marcus Stroman. Okay. He and it, Look, his last name's Stro, man. Oh. It would be Playing off of that. Beautiful. No, no, no. The guy's fantastic. And he's, he's on the, look, potential trade candidates. Like, pitchers, pitcher-wise, uh, Shane Bieber, Jack Flattery, Lucas Giolito, who's been uh, kind of – in the mix as far as Astros are concerned. And Marcus Stroman, like I just mentioned, and Lance Lynn. All these guys are pretty damn good. And uh, the Astros need us. They're, they're going to trade for a starting pitcher. I just We all know that. Um, I think Jose Arquiti will be back this week with the Astros. And I believe he will be one of the guys that so, may be in on the trade deal. I saw Arquiti and I think Jordan reporting to rehab. Jordan had a little setback. He had a head cold, so he will start his rehab today or tomorrow yeah, in AAA. Sugar Land. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, we'll see what happens there. I, I, I'm just still stuck on this Otani news because they're like, yeah. if they're going to make it, I believe they're six games back yep. in the division, and it's a long stretch if they want to go all the way this season. I just think it would be dumb for them to let him go as a whole <sighs> moving forward. He is the future of that, but it's ultimately who's going to pay more because, and who can win now? So, yes, yeah, there you go. Boom. Right on it. It's He's a rental, whoever gets him right now. Mm-hmm. Right? So, I I know teams want him, but there's not a lot out there. To like Some of the teams that want him can't give up that much, and that's the problem. He may end up staying in the, in the Los Angeles area <coughs> or with the Los Angeles Angels because there's just not – there's not enough out there for him for the Angels to get back right now, mm-hmm. right? Like they do, they do want to trade him because be, if they sign him to six, seven hundred million dollars, they're playing over a billion dollars to two guys. Mm-hmm. So I believe that after this year, Otani will be gone. I just don't know if he actually gets or the Angels can pull off a deal by the trade deadline. I don't know if there's enough out there. I, I just don't like the Yankees were in, but they've got their own issues, right? Like I, I don't, I don't see that happening. A lot of people, I know you Astro fans out there, talked about. Him coming here, and look, the Astros have some pieces they could probably pull it off, but we don't spend that much money. We're not going to sign anybody to seven hundred billion or seven hundred million next year or one billion. Also, where is he going to play? You cannot have two DHs. So Jordan would have to be what a permanent left fielder. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So he has been every he, year. He, well, no, Jordan's a DH and he plays outfield yeah, one yeah, one. No, yeah, right. One right. out of every five Whenever games. Whenever he does play, yeah. it is left field. Yes. You're right. You're right. And it's only home games, really, mm-hmm. mainly, right? So, um, I, I Otani, I don't know where he fits in the Astros lineup, and I've had a lot of people say, "Oh, well, we'll figure that out." No, no, you've. It's got to make sense, right? So, if you go down the list of people that could actually afford him and actually need him, 
there's just not a lot for, for for these. There's there's not enough for the Angels to get back to trade Otani. I don't think it would be impressive if they could try to move him or do move him before the deadline. Now, season's over. I believe he does sign somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Somebody yeah, like the Yankees. Don't think the Yankees. I was about to say. Yeah, they they got the money. Um, well, they, if if they do a trade, then I mean they definitely have the players that Angels would probably want. Yeah, just you know they want two or three guys that could probably play right now and then probably four or five prospects you're looking at like seven eight players for this guy right and that's just a rental that's what i'm saying like you're, you're just not only trading my players i mean you got to pay the man too. yeah well so that's next year right yeah so that's what i'm talking about just a rental and, and it you don't you don't give up seven or eight players for half a season right and then maybe you don't even sign them the year after the next coming year so there's a lot to to, to dive into with otani now is he the best player that we've ever seen? One hundred percent. Like his, his his numbers are better than than Mookie Betts uh, at hitting. His numbers are better than than Garrett Cole pitching. The guy is an absolute phenomenon. It's just I don't know if, if some of these teams have enough to uh, to go get him. Mm-hmm. I just Otani's great. Otani's fantastic. Um, I, I I love the guy. I think he's I think he's amazing. I had this guy uh, yesterday talk about the Astros don't need him. Blah blah blah. I was like talking all this. I'm oh, like, oh, they what? ultimately <laughs> get better by having him on the roster. Yeah, like if he even was a- though he has lost, he's had a lot of losing games at Minute Maid Park. Yeah, the Astros have his number they, for ul- sure. They ultimately get better because. Oh my God! Yeah, like, and I was like, bro, if the guy was an Astro, you would be. You would make. I think somebody put on the comment that if he was an Astro, that the guy would make bed sheets out of him. <laughs> I was like, yeah, probably. Oh my gosh! <laughs> uh, look, the guy. Of course, you want him. I don't think he fits in a Houston uniform just because of the way our roster is built. Um, but you know, Jason, like you said, the Yankees, and I believe that Major League Baseball would love to have Shohei Otani in pinstripes. What? Yeah, I'm sure they're actually pushing for that. All the Babe Ruth. Re- yep. References. Oh yeah, it would just be crazy. Uh, Samson Fernandez says Yankees and Dodgers have the money, and San Diego has a lot of trade value. That's very true. Um, stay on the West Coast. He doesn't want to be on the East Coast. I agree with you. Another team on the West Coast that has a lot of money and could sign him that tried to sign Carlos Correa, the San Francisco Giants. They could actually make a really, really big push for Otani. I've heard a little bit of rumblings about that, too. Um, and you actually just uh, bet on the Giants and got some money, right? Uh, hopefully I do tonight. Um, but, yeah, the Giants have been pretty well. The four top teams, I had this pulled up a minute ago. Let me see if I can find it again. This is for Jason, too. All right, the, uh, for bets, most uh, profitable MLB teams on the money line the first half of the season. And this is if you bet $100 for them on the, on the first half, right? So if you bet $100 on these teams first half of the season, you'd be up 1500 with the Cincinnati Reds. This is on the money line. Cincinnati Reds, you'd be up 1500 Baltimore Orioles, you'd be up 1300 Miami Marlins, 950 Arizona Diamondbacks, 850 And the Atlanta Braves, $800. That's if you put $100 on the money line for them to bet or for them to win every to win. single game. Mm-hmm. So uh, there you go for the second half of the season. We all know the Cincinnati Reds, why they're doing so well. So um, I did have some wagers. Go to Sports with Balls. If uh, I, I do daily posts and uh, who to bet on in the MLB and others uh, during the morning. So just log, follow us on Sports he with does Balls. Every single day. I'll you have can count there. on Jeff. Yep. 100%. Even when he's sick, he's doing them. <laughs> he's making bets from his bed. Did you see me? I had golf. I was playing golf and I made my bets in, in my house. In my house, I have a little, uh, like a, you know, a little practice tee, and I just hit the ball, like, and it actually, I was impressed by myself because it, it was a good hit. Nice. <laughs> but, uh, little plastic golf balls in my house. Nice. You know, so it's funny. It just, it just brought me back. So last week I was in Florida, and uh, we stayed on the golf course just because we had the puppy with us, and that was like the only pet friendly area, and so we couldn't stay at the condos like within the high tower. We had to stay on the golf course, and imagine that three girls who don't even swing a club. Staying on the golf course. Um, but it was really pretty out there. Anyways, that was just my little tidbit. It's been a long day. What? It's It's been a short day. I'm just kidding. It has been a long day. It's I know you came a from a shoot already. Day. Look, I want to bring in now or welcome on a, our, uh, our newest uh, advertiser, WestonGC.com. West done. You need your roofing done. You need exterior construction done. This is the guy to ring up. Give him a call, 832-534-2374. Wes at WestonGC.com. Weston CG. CG. Oh, CG. Construction Group. 
Construction Group. Com. Did I say GC, General Contractor? Yeah, you said GC. Well, he is a general contractor. That's why I said that. Look, it's my first time doing this. All right. <laughs> Come on, man. West done. Uh, give him a call. 832-534-2374. And look, I'm going to come up with a catchy slogan by next week. It's going to be interesting. Because we're pretty good at this. Weston. Right? CG. Really good at this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so give him a call. 832-534-2374. All right. Uh, what, else? what else do we have to go over today? Well, uh, like we said, we didn't really go into it, but the NFL camps do start tomorrow. Ooh. It's not like we're going to have like this spectacular, I don't know, performance of guys, but at least they, you know, they start getting their heads right. They start getting in the groove. and it, It'll be fun to have uh, football. Football on TV. Yes, TV and that's what, that's what you'll get. Yeah, you'll yeah. get these guys, these wide receivers and quarterbacks start throwing to each other. You'll get the offensive linemen start getting back into shape. Um, I have a question. Uh oh. Uh, is anybody watching the NBA Summer League? No. I know the Rockets are in the final tonight for somebody. Right. So uh, when I was in Florida, that was what was playing on the huge screen on the boardwalk. It's like the NBA Summer League, and I saw Rockets versus OKC. And I was like, what is going on here? It is, it's like a pickup game at LA Fitness. Uh, these guys, ah! like. <laughs> It is very bad basketball. It is. <laughs> one of our Rockets was like leading in points. Yeah, one of the, I, th I forgot his name. He gets he got the MVP. Um, Rockets are a very young team. I think they their average age is 20, 21, 20 years old, something like that. Managing those that young talent is going to be interesting for the Houston Rockets. We'll see uh, how they can how they can pull it all off. But as the NBA draws closer, of course, we'll we'll try to get more into that. But you know, I'm, I'm not a fan of the NBA until. Maybe after the All Star break. Yeah, I it's know. Just, now they they have an in season tournament now to try to make it more interesting, which is crazy. They, they got a tournament. They have a tournament with a trophy and everything. So oh, yeah. they're doing it soccer style then. Yeah, right in the middle cups. of the season. Yeah, with all the that confuses the heck out of me with soccer. There are so many cups, and I'm like, what matters and what doesn't yeah. matter? Did you know they all matter? <laughs> Three weeks from Thursday. So one, let's see, am I right? Wait, what, one? I don't want to speed up summer. Two weeks from Thursday. Wait, one, two, yeah, well, okay, August 3rd, Hall of Fame game. Yeah? Like an actual football game will be on your television on Thursday, August the 3rd. That is, that's two weeks from this Thursday. Wow, and I was just there. Whoa. Yeah, you were just there. Try to get us tickets. Let's go back. <laughs> Preseason August 9th, uh, Thursday, August 10th will be the first uh, preseason game. Samson said Whitmore became MVP. Oh, there you go. Whitmore for the Rockets. So For the Houston Rockets. All right. Uh, look, guys, if you missed anything, the, the uh, podcast version will be up. Just type in Sports With Balls in any podcast arena. We are there. So right when we uh, end this show, we'll try to get it up. ASAP, or just go back and watch the show from the beginning. Myself, Lauren Leal, and uh, Jason Vu as the producer. We went over the, over the DeAndre Hopkins stuff uh, at the beginning of the show. DeAndre Hopkins has uh, elected to move to Nashville right. and took the money. <clears throat> well, there was reports out there that highest, well, the starting offer he got was $4 million from a few of these teams. Obviously, he wanted a lot more. So he signs with the team that gave him the most money. Um, Titans Thanks. make the playoffs. Oh, uh, you know, th th the question is, does it put him at the top of the AFC South? No. It, does it put him over the Texans? Well, yes. Yeah, it's, everybody's over the Texans. Um, I hey, <laughs> we don't know yet, but yeah. I know. Yes, I know. we do. History <laughs> plays a factor, of course. Um, no, I, I think the Jacksonville Jaguars are, they're good. They are really good. Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne are very, very talented, and if they play up to the uh, up to the hype, they're gonna they're gonna make some some noise this year. Uh, Calvin Ridley, who we all know got suspended for gambling last year, is back, and he will be with the Jacksonville Jaguars, so that ups their roster as well. So uh, you can look for the Jacksonville Jaguars to to be a top of the uh, AFC South, and then the Colts. Yeah, well, we got the Colts. Yeah, they're kind of look. Jonathan Taylor had a step back this past year from the year he had before. Uh, which we, he was number one fantasy football player. He was fantastic. I so, think I had him on my team or something like that. You didn't even pay attention to your team. I, I was, I'm the I commissioner know, of the league, I and uh, Lauren Lauren drafts players or puts it on automatic. I don't even know, and then I never never it. touches I, it again. So I pay attention at the beginning, and then you know working on Sundays. Like, now I know how to uh, take over other people's teams. So I, if Lauren, if if you're in this year and. You're not doing anything. I'm going to take over your team. No. <laughs> if 
I do it this year, I am paying attention, and I'm going to change my roster <coughs> every Sunday, and I'll realize oh. if some of these guys are on a bye or not. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> pretty interesting. And so, of course, and at the beginning of the show, we went over uh, Saquon Barkley and Josh Jacobs not signing their franchise tag tender. So they are opting, I believe, not to even report to camps this week. And we'll see if they hold out. Um that's going to be the big discussion in Giants camp and in Raiders camp. And it really puts a damper on these camps when you're out there practicing and you don't know if this is your starting running back yet or not on both camps, right? Like, it, who's who's doing this? And the uh, Las Vegas Raiders have a brand-new quarterback in Jimmy G. We don't know how he's going to how he's gonna fit in over there. And Josh Jacobs could make he's that transition. off per usual. Well, yeah, but that's just so – It just harder. I know because Jacobs, Jacobs won't be there. And then – Danny Dimes is absolutely. He ain't no Danny Dimes. <laughs> He's not throwing dimes. He's terrible that without Saquon. That has been uh, retired. I think it's funny. Uh, yeah, uh, Danny Dimes, uh, I, it, he's terrible without Saquon. Absolutely miserable, and so will the Giants without Saquon Barkley. So uh, we'll see what happens. Fantasy football guys are just going to have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, he, uh, Hopefully they figure out something because right now the only options. Look, Tony Pollard. Signed his franchise tag, so he will report to camp, and he will play under his franchise tag number and be a free agent. All three of them will be free agents next year, but Tony Pollard's the only one that signed his franchise tag. Uh, Saquon and Josh Jacobs, they're not going to report to camp, and we're going to see how that all, all plays out. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next big thing, like we said earlier, is the MLB trade deadline, which is on August the 1st. Hopefully the teams that are in contention, uh, contention, like the Houston Astros, will make a move. They're looking for a left-hand bat, <coughs> Cody Bellinger. And mm. or uh, we know they're getting a starting pitcher. Cody Bellinger ain't coming here. Uh, that's the rumor. Andrew McCutcheon's out there. Um, Dylan Carson. Nolan Arenado. If the Houston Astros pull off Nolan Arenado, wow, that would be absolutely monstrous. But we'll see. And, the, and St. Louis just got him from Colorado, and he is a beast so uh we'll look to see what happens between now and august 1st so uh happy july 17th to all you guys tattoo days uh national Ooh. tattoo day lottery day but and world emoji oh yeah the uh jake paul fight is august 5th <laughs> bam there you go oh is it is are they august. <laughs> oh so it's that right weekend there. it's that <laughs> weekend then also uh not all star uh hall of fame game hall of weekend. Fame? yeah hall right fame before but you said you wanted stroman to come to the astros yeah man as a pitcher marcus stroman my Gosh, yes, dude. Um, if they pull off Marcus Stroman and Nolan Arenado, or even Cody Bellinger, Astros are way up there to win the World Series. Way up there. It'll be Astros Atlanta again. Mm. Uh, the Atlanta Bla Braves are playing out their gourd. They're really, really good. <clears throat> all right, did we miss anything, Lauren? I think we pretty much hit it all. I'm trying to like go over and I don't know, looking at these guys that you told me about, but uh, no, think I don't we're think good? so. I think we're good. I'll I mean, be out of town next week. Yeah, I'm going to preseason games for my team. Okay, they're playing. Back they're, to they're playing England? over here. No, they're oh. playing here in the states. Oh, where? So, uh, Philadelphia and in Orlando. So I'm so confused with the soccer season because I thought it started. It's the same in February. As, it starts at the same time as football season, and it really? ends at the same time that basketball season ends. Okay, that's such a long season. <laughs> it but is. that's that's. That's uh, MLS, though, is different. Oh, oh, no, MLS is completely different. From it's February. Yeah, no, it speaking is. of, Messi makes his debut yes. on Friday. So those of y'all, I know my son will be watching Messi as he, uh, look, they, they, introdu they introduced him yesterday. And I got to say, and everybody's talking about this, they made that stadium look like it held about 100,000 people. But the stadium he plays in holds 18,000 folks. Yes. And it looked like the cameras were fantastic. <laughs> because when you watched this, you were like, there's 100,000 people there. Like, no, I thought it was I in mean, Miami that is Stadium. Purposefully. But those they do that on purpose. <laughs> the stadium because a few teams do play in NFL stadium like Atlanta. They play where the Falcons, Falcons play. So when they play there, I guarantee that's going to be sold out. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm sure. It's, um, it, 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 it's, it's good business for the MLS. <coughs> the right. CONCAF final is on now. We all know that the United States of America got their butts handed to them last weekend. Well, I mean, they lost in penalty kicks, but it was embarrassing. I thought they should have won both those last two games. But Panama and Mexico are 0-0 about to go into the that half. Was at, uh, that or was at the half Stadium already. a couple weeks ago. So uh, yeah. CONCAF Gold Cup is going See on. See what I mean? Another cup. Yeah. 
another another they're, another they're, cup. They're, they're, they're all the around. Is, but the thing and is, now and, and now the going NBA is going to have a cup. <laughs> but now you're doing preseason games. I'm so confused. Well, basically, I'm like one of those hardcore guys. You know, the spring training guys, like the the baseball guys that go over to Florida and they go to yeah, wh- West where, Palm, yeah, where Astros. and they do that. That's uh, that's essentially what I'm going to be doing. Okay. All right, and we'll keep you updated on the NIL issues, but it uh, looks like Congress is going to get a hold of the college football and, well, just college sports in general with the NIL deals uh, because they are getting out of control. But, look, we've yeah, got big happens. shows coming up. We'll have our NFL special coming up. We've got college football about to start. The uh, Man, I mean, there's just so much that's going on. The MLB playoffs is right around the corner. It's going to be a blast. So, listen, thank you guys for joining into Sports with Balls. We want to thank Christians tailgate for having us here as we do uh, a lot of our shows i don't want to say all of them but a lot of them so well, pretty much yeah thank pretty you much, thank yeah. you guys for having us here also want to thank our new sponsor uh weston gc call west dunn over there for all your roofing needs and exterior uh what exterior construction west at weston cg.com 832-534-2374 last thoughts lauren leo uh, have a great week, guys. I'm sorry. I will bring more energy next week. It has been a long day and a long weekend and a trip prior to that. Love y'all, and thanks for uh, tuning in. All right, here's my closing thing. It just got reported. How close was Josh Jacobs to signing an extension with the Raiders? He was sitting in his car in the parking lot at the Raiders facility with teammate Max Crosby at the deadline trying to get it done. Uh, he is trying. Ooh, man. And I know Saquon Barkley was in the building Hot trying to get breaker. his done. Woo, good luck, Raiders fans. Good luck, Giants fans. We'll uh, we'll let you know what happens next time right here on Sports with Balls. I'm Jeff Michael. She's Lauren Leal.